Okay, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and check my audio on this thing, check, check. I'm gonna act like I'm looking at this camera. Uh, should I wear my sunglasses or not? I don't know, how do I, how do I look? Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Christ Gear. I'm your host, John Hawes, and in case you hadn't noticed from the first clip, I'm wearing a completely different outfit. Truth is, this is like my fifth or sixth take of me explaining my testimony, and um, that's just because I would include certain details in some parts and then not others, and then when I had those really important details, it wasn't quite clear and concise, so I'm just going to try again, totally different day, just take a deep breath, and go from the beginning. Also, before I start kind of getting into a little bit about me and some other stuff, I want to go ahead and explain that this is a three-part series. Uh, the first of a three-part series where, again, it's, a, it's an intro about me um, where I kind of explain uh, just my interests, kind of where I've been, where I'm going, just some, some cases vague, but you guys get the idea. Um, and then also just kind of understand just, yeah, like I said, where I'm going, why I'm trying to incorporate my faith into this channel. The second part of this three-part series will be me introducing, actually the second and third rather, though that will be me introducing the two vehicles that will for now be featured in this channel. Not exclusively these two vehicles, but the main two. Um, so if you want to know more about that, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, can you subscribe? Actually, I'm going to ask, not just say, hey, but please subscribe. It'll help me out also so that way you guys can see in your feed when I actually post stuff. And even then, hit that bell icon so that way you guys will be notified when I post that stuff so that way you guys can watch it. Um, trying to think if there's something else I should say. I think there is. I just can't think of it. But you know what? With all that being said, let me go ahead and just start explaining what's going on with me. So as I already said, my name is John Hawes. I am your host. I am 25 years old. I have been born and raised uh, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, actually more so Fort Worth than Dallas. And uh, for, like I said, for the most part of my life, this is what I, this is where I've called home. Um, to, where should I start? So obviously this channel is, gear, is <laughs> geared, <laughs> no pun intended. All right, this channel is trying to incorporate faith with say just car builds, I don't know if I want to say motorsports, but just stuff around cars. Let me go ahead and explain to you guys just kind of where my background as far as comes, cars comes from, and then later on in the video I will show you guys or explain to y'all where uh, my faith comes into play for all this and why I want to share with y'all. So like I said, born and raised here in Texas, my dad has an old 1966 Mustang that he has been restoring since before I was born. And um, it's just, it's been kind of a slow project, but you know what, what, what car project isn't? Anyways, my dad's got an old 1966 Mustang he's been working on since I was, since before I was born. And that is a little bit of what kind of got me going. Now, obviously I, uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars also had some to play with that. Cause you know, the, uh, your, most ex uh, your most expensive addiction starts at 97 cents. And <laughs> I love that meme. Anyways, so with Matchbox cars, building, building cars and trucks out of Legos, uh, even um, honestly, when I was younger, I, uh, one of my first games that I really loved was playing Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. Yeah, that's right, throwing it way back there. Anyways, this, a lot of this stuff had to do with uh, shaping my interest in cars. Um, and then from there, it just kind of took off and it grew throughout the years. Uh, there are times I did help my dad with his Mustang. My Later on, my stepmom bought a 1964 Ford Falcon that I remember changing spark plugs on. So I got, I got my hands dirty a little bit tinkering with some of this stuff. But the thing is, I had this huge passion for cars that was not really being fulfilled. And that's where my story in the Army comes in. So after I graduated high school in 2013, I uh, graduated from South Lake Carroll High School specifically. Like I said, went in the Army and... Um, I signed on to be a wheeled vehicle mechanic. Now, up to this point, I never really, I, I knew a little bit about diesels, but I didn't really know much. And the reason why I'm bringing up diesels specifically is because honestly, for tactical vehicles, that's all that the military has. And being a wheeled vehicle mechanic, that's all I worked on. Anything as small as a Humvee, if you want to call it small, all the way up to a Hemet, which 
um, let's just say for any of y'all who know diesels, is powered by a Caterpillar C15 Acert, which I think is like 15 liters, if I remember right, or 930 something cubic inches. So monstrous inline line six engine. Um, I mostly worked on the Humvees up to the medium duty trucks. And then, um, like I said, dabbled a little bit with those bigger ones, but not so much just because of the, 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 the amount of vehicles, the, the lotted vehicles, I guess you'd say I was responsible for. Uh, none of those bigger trucks were really in that fleet, so to speak. So anyways, um, that's, that's kind of where I started learning more about diesels. Now, shortly after I got in the army, I bought my first vehicle, which in fact is my 1997 I was about to say 96. My 1997 Ford F-250 with the 7.3, that's, um, I've done I've done a little bit of work too. So if you guys are familiar with my Instagram, there is a link on the banner somewhere. Uh, go check out my Instagram. You'll see a little bit of kind of where the truck's gone um, as far as where it's going. You've also, you'll also kind of sort of see just, you know, my involvement when it comes to schooling for cars and trucks as well. Um, speaking of schooling, after I got out of the army, after I got a little bit of experience working on trucks, I went to go learn about them more in an official, um, I guess you'd say school, tech school course. I went through Lincoln Tech's diesel tech program, and then I went through their nine month welding school, graduated both of them, because my whole interest was um, honestly going and building diesel trucks that uh, can just kick you in the seat of the butt, or kick you in the seat of your pants when you put that right foot on the gas pedal, or the accelerator rather, because they don't have gas, and you know, just, just have fun with that. And even then, if you wanted to be able to tweak it in such a way, say run at a roll cage, You'll see where I'm going with this one. Wanted a roll cage, say body work, rat rod, whatever. That's something where I was trying to go for. Now, I, uh, like I said, I learned welding. I loved TIG welding. MIG welding, meh. Stick welding is fun, challenging. Honestly, it frustrates me that I can't get it to do what I wanted to do. TIG being the most complicated process for me was actually the easiest because I got to get, I figured out how to get the metal exactly where I wanted it and I loved it. So anyways, that's kind of that's kind of where I was trying to go. Like I said, interested in cars and trucks, diesels, because I worked on diesels. I had my F-250 that I already started uh, doing a few things to, not too much, uh, especially when I was in tech school. But um, at that point, I think it was just a chip and injectors. Um, now, eh, there's a little bit more, and I'll show you all that in my third video. Now, with all that being said, um, like I said, just being an avid, I'd say diesel truck fan, or just car fan, gearhead in general. Um, I do like American Muscle. I do appreciate some Japanese stuff. I just don't like stuff that's riced out or um, other, I guess you'd say builds that are borderline ricer. It's hard to say exactly. Like the Bosuzoku or whatever they call it. I don't know. Um, not really my thing, but I do love my, I love me a good tuner, not a ricer. Yeah, let me, let me go ahead and explain more where my faith comes in. So, Going back to when I was being born and raised, I was born and raised in the church. Uh, in fact, a church here in the suburb, suburbs of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, actually, I went through several different churches, ranging from a, a non-denominational church, I think, to a another to a Bible church in Denton, to a Baptist church, to a I think eventually a Lutheran church. Um, and so that's kind of a little bit. That's kind of where I got some of my basis for when it comes to Christianity. Up to. Two years ago, honestly, I was living a lot of my life just by how other people told me to live, say my dad or say a pastor. Um, I had, I was just living out kind of what I thought I should do. I was, I was familiar with the Bible stories, um, but to be honest, until two years ago, yes, when I was 23, I wasn't quite familiar where the, I wasn't quite familiar, I didn't quite understand where the life application was. Let's just pick it back up in high school. Went through several different churches growing up, was raised in several different churches growing up. Got in high school, got, went in the army, and then from there in basic training, I went to church a couple times just because I didn't want to hang out in the bay to potentially get yelled at by drill sergeants, even though it was kind of the day off. Or not really, the morning off, rather. I'll just say that for, for Sunday mornings. So to um, lessen the chance of me being yelled at, I would go to I would go to church, not just not just to get out of trouble and all that stuff, but I, you know, I wanted I wanted to go to church. Um, to be honest, was it impactful to me for the most part? I don't. I don't think so. I don't remember. The one thing I do remember is the song Sick of It by Skillet um, that the chaplain, he was like, hey, check out this song. It was actually a really cool song. So, um, you know, and I, and I applaud him because he tried to, he tried to um, bring some, I guess you'd say modern stuff to it and kind of make it fun. So, and I don't remember his name. It just, yeah, it was just, it just kind of stops there. So anyways, went through that. I went, I graduated basic training. Uh, I think it was September, 
18th, 19th, or 20th, something like that, 2013. And then I went literally down the street there in Fort Jackson, and that's where I started my, uh, I, that's where I worked, started my AIT um, for or wheeled vehicle mechanic school, started to learn that stuff. Um, went through that, was it 12 months, I think? all without going to church and then got stationed in Fort Hood where honestly I really didn't attend church there. Now, whenever I would come up here to visit the girlfriend, my girlfriend at the time, um, you know, her dad being Lutheran, I did meet her in that Lutheran church I went to, but uh, there's some stuff that happened. They went to a sister Lutheran church. And so to be honest, just on say like Easter or whatever, you know, on a few special days, I would go with them. Um, wasn't really often. I was just kind of like, oh, okay, we're going to church. Cool, whatever. Uh, I was somewhat indifferent to it. Um, all throughout this time, I want to add, I was calling myself a Christian. Um, but yet again, I wasn't, I wasn't wholeheartedly chasing God. My passion wasn't really there. Um, and even then it's just, I, I mean, I, I, I had no fellowship with God. I didn't talk to him. I didn't go to him. I didn't, I didn't seek his will in anything. He, in anything that was in my life. Um, I didn't seek his will in anything in my life. I just did what I pleased, how I thought I should go. So, or what I thought, I did what I thought I should do. Anyways, um, before I got out of the army, 2016, me and her broke it off. Um, and then about two years later, I think it's about two years later, two years after that happened, about a year and a half after I got out of the army, I met another girl at a Baptist church that I was going to. And, um, and things started off going pretty well. We only dated for a few months, but there was, there was a lot of stuff that some weird stuff that came up with like with someone in her past that honestly was driving a wedge between me and her. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. It just, it was a long story. It was nasty. We were both, I don't know if she'll be willing to admit it or not. And I'm not going to drop names here, but she's honestly, she's got some stuff that um, she had been dealing with. And up till when we were talking a few months ago, she still is dealing with. I don't know exactly where all that goes. And I don't think it really matters too, too much. Uh, still sure of the best and I'm praying for her. But nonetheless, the reason why I'm bringing her up is because God actually used her two years ago to get to me. Um, like I said, me and her met in the church where like I, said, I knew when I, when I got out of the army, I knew I needed to go get right with God. Thanks to another soldier that I was stationed with. Uh, this man, me and him still talk, talk today every so often. Great dude. Um, but he had that passion for Christ that I didn't have. And I kind of felt bad. I was or, uh, sort of bad, guilty, not necessarily like in a bad way, convicted, I guess you'd say. It's like, man, he's got something that I don't. And I was born raising this stuff. I acknowledge this stuff. Notice I said acknowledge. Anyways. So, huh. again, fast forward another two years. Back to 2018. Let me be clear here. Back to 2018, where me and this girl are breaking up. Um, actually, she was breaking up with me because I was... Um, honestly, I just put a lot of pressure on her. Again, I wasn't healthy at all. I had a lot of hurts and hangups from when I was a kid. Um, say like a divorce that, that, that my dad went through where the woman who gave birth to me, she left me. Um, and then just some other things that would contribute also to these abandonment issues that I had. So God had his hands full with me. When the army, this stuff was just amplified. Um, and it just, oof, man, yeah. Um, being an angry, pissed off veteran, mad at the world, didn't care. Yeah, that was me. And when I started dating the second girl I was talking to you about, that's largely the attitude I had. I knew that I had these hurts and hangups, but um, I was just trying to get through them. I was trying to do my own thing, my own way of trying to get through them. And it just, it wasn't working at all. And what especially spoke to me, going back to the night of the breakup, was when she said, um, first off pointing off that, if you will, walked away from other friends at, that I'd made, excuse me, other friends I had made at that church. So <clears throat> she pointed that stuff out to me as well as some other issues. But the thing that stuck out to me the most, mind you, me and her met in a Baptist church, but she said, John, you need to get right with God. And it stuck out because I, in my mind, I had been doing all of this stuff to try to get right with God. I'd been going to church. I had been trying to find friends. I had been, um, not so much reading my Bible, but I've been going to Bible studies, you know, and I thought, okay, surely those counted. Well, um, the thing is I was focused on the actions rather than God himself. 
that next day, even though I had been gifted Bibles and some of those, and those Bible studies I mentioned a minute ago, I had brought my own Bible. But nonetheless, that day I went, I bought myself, excuse me, not that day, the next day, I bought myself my own study Bible from a local bookstore. It was a New Living Translation study Bible, Life Application Study Bible. Learned so much stuff through that. Within the first, I think, week or two, I had gone through the book of John, was studying the teachings of Christ. But, uh, but as I was doing that, um, I had also been... Uh, dabbling in just some other things that I had grew up learning in church. Okay, so so I was saying, I remember re- learning about this. Where does the Bible say about that? I remember learning that. Where does the Bible say about it? So on and so forth. And as I started doing this, um, God just started connecting the dots for me. What led to what to lead to what to lead to what? And I caught so many more details by reading this book that he had given us, uh, or it's this book of books rather. And so many details, so many things were, um, were, were just thrown on me so (sighs) anyways um, but one of the first things I remember was as a kid growing up I had the nine fruits of the spirit memorized most of it was from a song that I had learned that I had sung at a church that I went to Uh, one of my first churches it was a non-denominational church being that the love to me the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control now What rocked my world when I went to go read this for the first time in Galatians 5 is that I had always thought that I needed to show those to be right with God, to be, to make God happy, to um, essentially to be able to have God say in living inside me via his Holy Spirit. But what rocked, what blew my mind was when for the first time reading this, I realized first off that there was a whole longer list as far as the results of our own desires, our own sinful nature, as us Christians call it. And I mean, it ranges anything from, you know, sexual morality to, um, I think adultery, I think if I remember right, um, angry, uh, yeah, angry outbursts, uh, dissension, division, jealousy. There's a lot, there's a lot. Um, some of those spoke out to me, but when I read that, realizing how much of that spoke out to me, and then reading those first few words in front of those nine fruits of the spirit, um, I realized how much I wasn't living by God and how much I needed him. Now those words to clue you all in, to bring you all into this is the spirit in you produces so on and so forth. And that's when I realized that my whole life I had been living what I thought I, what I thought was right, trying to make myself better, to make myself pleasing to God. And that's when I realized I couldn't because I had tried, I had failed. So, even though I think I'd already opened my heart to God. What are you doing? So fun fact, I guess a black camera staying out in the sun for 15 minutes um, makes it too hot to work. So kind of got a little cut off there. I'm not exactly sure where I stopped. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start from the beginning and try to make ends meet. In me, to dwell in me. I needed you to lead me. I needed you to speak to me and guide me. Um, when I realized that, that's, believe it or not, when all this stuff became easier. That's when I realized that I needed to stop holding grudges against people in my life. That's when I realized um, that I needed to forgive them. When, not that they necessarily deserve forgiveness, but because God first forgave me, so then I need to forgive them. And I didn't want to forgive them. And yet, I would, uh, I remember that first week, I would think I would have memories of certain things in my past and I would be like, God, this isn't pleasing to you. This is just riling me up, pissing me off. Lord, help me to forgive them. And also God, bless them. I don't want to forgive them, but please help me forgive them. And to be honest, that's where a lot of it started. I still have this stuff that I deal with. um, But um, I mean, within the last two years, God has just done a lot in my heart and every day is a new learning opportunity, a new learning experience. So, uh, where does that put me now? So, like I said, it's been about two years since I've been walking with Christ. Um, as far as finding a church, I, I was plugged into one church for a while. I realized that there was another one where I found a better community in, where I liked their teachings that were more applicable to your life. Not just, hey, here's a whole bunch of head knowledge of the Bible, but rather, this is where you should be concerned if you're not really moved by this. Um, it just, it's stuff that hits home. I mean, not again, not to say that we have to do this, this, and this, but rather it's just, um, it's, it's, it's some pretty hard, heavy stuff that kind of makes, makes you think and wonder, 
um, as far as what you think you've been doing. If you just say, like, yeah, I know who God is, is that enough or is that not? And to be honest, it isn't. Um, it's not just knowing God, but, but again, it's having a, that relationship and that's where um, the peace and the joy comes in. That's where the, that's where all the magic happens, so to speak. So, came to know Christ two years ago. This was, when did I say it was? October 2018? No, August. The end of July, beginning of August 2018, uh, within, within a month or two, I was baptized. And by that point, I had already been serving at a local ministry, uh, volunteering just to help just uh, A, feed the homeless, but also just try to minister to them, which even then, even like while I'm sitting there presenting the Bible to them, God is using them to teach me stuff, not just a way of presenting the Bible, but also even then to look at how little they had. And some of them had some amazing faith that just blew my mind to be honest, when the Lord uh, uh, financially and, provi and just with provisions and all that stuff has blessed me with so much more, but yet these guys have so much more peace um, and just love for God, so much more than, than what, um, so much more than what people I know, especially graduating from, like I said, high, South Lake High School, where um, just a lot of people, I guess you would say, take for granted the, the wealth that they're born into. But within, within the last year, uh, God really started leading me towards ministry. And so now, uh, actually this was in August, 2019. Cause at the time I'm filming this, this is, it is actually November 3rd, 2020. And I've started my degree majoring in Christian ministry, just COVID threw a lot of this stuff off. And so Lord willing next semester, uh, I think January of 2021, I'll start back up in that and I'll finally finish out that degree. And then from there, we'll see where it goes. But, um, you guys want to see where this adventure goes i'm going to ask that y'all again please subscribe it'll help me out you want to see the rest of my videos as far as what i'm also going to be working with um also just um i don't know just you want you want to you want some entertainment also sprinkled with a little bit of inspiration from god um and then again stick around so uh if there's let me go ahead and say this too again because i don't know exactly where this is going to go um i would love to hear y'all's opinions keep in mind that this is a christian based channel while i will like I said i'm going to be glorifying god in this um but i'm not going to try to be shoving it down y'all's throats i'm just going to be presenting and to be honest most of the time i'm going to be like working on a car or a truck or something or out for a motorcycle ride but you guys got ideas stuff that you would like to see happen and if i can make it happen i would love to hear it i would love to consider it um with all that being said i'm going to go ahead and sign off i think i included everything i needed included in this take y'all hang around and god bless y'all